believe it. The 20th century marked a dynamic shift in eating habits, ushering in iconic and, at times, infamous junk foods that have become deeply embedded in the ever-evolving landscape of American history. From the roaring 20s to the turn of the millennium, each decade has left its unforgettable mark on the snack aisle, introducing new tastes, textures, and innovations that captivated palates and shaped a unique culinary identity. The original Blizzard flavored treat swirling with your favorite candy, fruit, or nuts. It's upside down right thick and delicious. So come along as we explore the most popular American junk foods from every decade in the 20th century. Snack time, anytime. You get a big delight in every bite. In the early 1900s, a significant development occurred in the American beverage industry, the emergence of Coca-Cola. Back in 1886, Dr. John Stith Pemberton concocted this carbonated drink as a medicinal tonic, but it quickly transformed into a cultural icon. This era saw the United States shift towards industrialization, urbanization, and mass consumption, and Coca-Cola rode that wave to popularity. Why did it become such a hit? Well, people loved the sweet flavor that matched the taste of the times, appealing to a wide audience. Plus, its initial marketing touted it as a refreshing beverage with supposed health benefits, adding to its allure. As the nation embraced urban living, Coca-Cola became the go-to drink in the burgeoning American soda fountain culture. These soda fountains, social hubs in drugstores and soda shops, became popular hangout spots for everyone. Coca-Cola, with its recognizable logo and refreshing taste, quickly became the drink of choice in these social hotspots. Mass media, like radio and print advertising, played a big role in making Coca-Cola a household name. The iconic Coca-Cola logo, with its Spencerian script, became instantly recognizable. Clever marketing campaigns like Santa Claus enjoying a Coke during the holidays helped establish the brand's association with joy and celebration. Back then, you could snag a bottle of Coca-Cola for just a nickel. That's five cents, making it an affordable luxury for many Americans. The brand's accessibility, paired with savvy marketing strategies, fueled its widespread popularity. As the century rolled on, Coca-Cola kept evolving to meet changing consumer preferences. Its enduring popularity has transcended generations, turning it into a global symbol of American culture. Today, Coca-Cola is everywhere, with various products and marketing campaigns that show the drink's lasting appeal. There's nothing like a Coca-Cola nut. Like the From its modest origins in the late 19th century to its rise as a cultural icon in the early 1900s, Coca-Cola's journey mirrors the spirit of a swiftly evolving America. But what about the popular junk foods of the 1910s? Stay tuned to find out. The 1910s witnessed the emergence of a beloved American snack that would stand the test of time, the iconic Oreo cookie. Mmm. Now you just learn to tie your shoelaces and you'll be all set. Only Oreo. Introduced to the world in 1912 by the National Biscuit Company, now Nabisco, Oreos quickly became a favorite that has stood the test of time. Back then, the United States was going through significant social and cultural changes, becoming more urbanized and industrialized. People were all about convenience and ready to eat foods and Oreos with their chocolate wafers and sweet, creamy filling, perfectly aligned with these emerging preferences. Cookies from Nabisco. America's cookie jar. Originally called the Oreo Biscuit, these cookies were marketed as a sophisticated and indulgent snack for everyone. 
The distinctive design, featuring the Nabisco logo on each wafer, added to its visual appeal. The chocolatey flavor and the delightful contrast of crunchy cookies with a creamy center made Oreos an instant hit. As the 1910s marked the era of mass production and packaging innovations, Oreos transitioned from bulk sales to being available in distinctive blue packages, enhancing their visibility on store shelves. Amidst the socioeconomic changes of the time, Oreos became a snack that resonated with consumers seeking a convenient and affordable indulgence. In the United States, they were sold for $0.25 five dollars, which will be equivalent to almost $8 in 2024. Their affordability, coupled with their delicious taste, made them a popular choice for families and individuals alike. To munch a creamy, crunchy chocolate, O-R-E-O, goes great with the magic. Over the decades, Oreos evolved to cater to changing tastes, becoming a cultural phenomenon with various variations, limited edition releases, and inspiring creative recipes. Even after more than a century, Oreos continue to capture the hearts and taste buds of people worldwide. The 1920s, known as the Roaring Twenties, were a time of economic boom, cultural vibrancy, and a shift toward city living in the United States. During this period, some snacks emerged and became long-lasting favorites. Eskimo pies, Baby Ruth, and Cheez-It are standout treats that made a lasting impact on American junk food culture. In 1921, Eskimo pies changed the ice cream game. These tasty frozen delights combined vanilla ice cream with a chocolate coating, making them a convenient and mess-free treat. Regular Eskimo pie, man, even I can't tell the difference. Neither can the bear. The 1920s, love for convenience and new culinary experiences made Eskimo pies widely popular. There's nothing like it, nothing like an Eskimo pie. You'd probably have a hard time believing that the Eskimo pies sold for only five cents in the 1920s, the same as Baby Ruth, a caramel and nougat candy bar with peanuts. This hit the scene in the same year. Named after President Grover Cleveland's daughter, it quickly became a sensation. Baby Ruth from Nestle, this baby gets you. The chewy and nutty candy appealed to the taste buds of a generation enjoying the freedoms of the jazz age. The growing popularity of sports at the time further boosted Baby Ruth as a handy on-the-go energy snack. In 1921, Cheez-It, the iconic cheesy cracker, made its debut, meeting the demand for savory snacks. Gotta have it. At only 25 cents for a box, this baked cheese cracker became a household favorite, offering a crispy and flavorful alternative to sweet treats. As the 1920s embraced leisure and entertainment, Cheez-Its convenient packaging made it a go-to snack for social gatherings and parties. In the middle of the night, baked cheese at high ho to make the party right, the baker man can. The economic prosperity of the 1920s meant more discretionary income, leading to the rise of snack culture. Americans sought novel and tasty treats, and the snack industry responded with innovations that influenced the future of junk food. These snacks, while varying in price, were generally affordable, making them accessible to a broad audience. Today, Eskimo Pies, Baby Ruth, and Cheez-It have stood the test of time, becoming iconic brands that still satisfy the cravings of snack enthusiasts. The 1930s, marked by the Great Depression, posed significant challenges for many Americans. Economic struggles prompted a shift in culinary preferences, focusing on affordability and simplicity. One standout comfort food that gained prominence during this period was macaroni and cheese. With its budget-friendly ingredients and easy preparation, this dish became a go-to for families navigating limited resources. Macaroni and cheese offered a comforting and satisfying meal without burdening already tight budgets. Its affordability made it a popular choice for households trying to manage during the economic downturn. Turn. The combination of pasta and a simple cheese sauce provided a filling and economical option for families nationwide. In addition to macaroni and cheese, the 1930s introduced iconic snacks that have since become enduring symbols of American junk food. Two such treats were Twinkies and Snickers bars. Twinkies! Chocolatey Hostess Cupcakes! You get a big delight in every bite of Hostess Cupcakes and Twinkies! 
Twinkies, a golden sponge cake filled with sweet cream, quickly became a favorite snack. Its affordable price and delightful taste made Twinkies a sought-after indulgence for those seeking sweetness during challenging times. Hostess Twinkies cakes, fruit pies, and cupcakes. Yahoo! The fresh snacks with a snack in the middle. Snickers bars, introduced in 1930, offered a satisfying mix of nougat, caramel, peanuts, and milk chocolate. The combination of textures and flavors made Snickers an instant hit, providing a convenient and delicious energy boost. In an era of economic uncertainty, these snacks brought a small but significant source of joy and pleasure. Now from his corner, Jack says, Hooray! I'm gonna stick to Snickers, starting today! If you like peanuts and chocolate, then stick with Snickers is a bar for you. The popularity of macaroni and cheese, Twinkies, and Snickers during the 1930s can be attributed to their affordability, simplicity, and the universal need for moments of delight amidst widespread hardship. Sleeves was all my joy. Green sleeves was my... Back then, everything was basically under a dollar. Bacon cost 38 cents a pound, peanut butter cost 28 cents while steaks went for 22 cents per pound. While macaroni and cheese remained a comfort food staple, Twinkies and Snickers evolved, becoming enduring classics in the American snack landscape. Are you eager to explore the iconic junk foods that ruled the 1940s? Well, hold tight for a delicious dive into wartime snacks. In the violent 1940s, the impact of World War II touched every aspect of American life, including the food scene. Rationing became a common practice, placing restrictions on various goods like sugar, butter, and meat. However, amidst these challenges, two iconic American snacks emerged and became beloved nationwide. Dairy Queen Soft Serve and M and Ms. founded in 1940 in Joliet, Illinois, Dairy Queen introduced its signature soft serve ice cream during a time when ice cream production faced limitations due to rationing. The innovation was in creating a smoother, creamier texture that set Dairy Queen apart. A quart of soft serve costs only 35 cents. Sadly, we can't bring these prices back. Everybody loves a treat with the the popularity of Dairy Queen's soft serve soared, offering a sweet escape during a period marked by sacrifice and wartime hardships. The treat became a symbol of indulgence, providing a sense of normalcy and joy in the face of adversity. Son, whenever we want a treat, we say moo. In fact, everybody does. That's because the greatest genuine milk treat is Dairy Queen. In 1941, M and Mems also entered the scene as a wartime snack. These candy-coated chocolates were initially designed for military rations due to their resistance to melting, a crucial feature for soldiers in various climates. The hard candy shell protected the chocolate within, making M&Ms a convenient and durable treat for troops. Post-war M&Ms transitioned into the consumer market, captivating the public with their vibrant colors and delightful combination of a crunchy shell and smooth chocolate center. And costing only five cents, M&Ms quickly became a popular snack across the country. Cover it with chocolate and candy coated right. The evidence man. The popularity of these snacks during the 1940s stems from their ability to offer a brief escape from the challenges of wartime life. Both Dairy Queen Soft Serve and M and Ms provided a taste of indulgence and joy, becoming comfort foods that resonated with a population facing unprecedented difficulties. As the war concluded and rationing eased, these snacks continued to thrive in the post-war era. Today, both Dairy Queen and M and Ms have become enduring symbols of American snacking, with various variations and innovations keeping them relevant in the ever-evolving landscape of junk food. In the 1950s, American culinary history took a turn with the widespread introduction of processed foods that significantly influenced the nation's eating habits. Three standout additions to the American diet during this era were Dunkin' Donuts, or Ida frozen potato products, and Cheese Whiz, each playing a role in the rise of convenience and indulgence. Time to make the donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, up to 52 varieties fresh day and night. Dunkin' Donuts, established in 1950 in Quincy, Massachusetts, became a breakfast sensation perfectly suited to the fast-paced lifestyle of post-war America. The chain's ring-shaped pastries quickly won hearts with diverse flavors and the irresistible allure of freshly brewed coffee. Reducing our big idea from a giant in the business, the world's smallest donuts. 
in New Dunkin' Donuts. Beyond being a quick bite spot, Dunkin' Donuts transformed into a cultural hub and a morning ritual, reflecting the suburban culture of the 1950s. And, costing just a dollar, it was a treat many Americans longed for. Or Ida, founded in 1952, brought a revolution in meal preparation with a range of frozen potato products. Burgers and all right at tater tots, the best. Life would be perfect if every day was tea. From French fries to hash browns and tater tots, or Ida cost less than a dollar and provided households with a time-saving solution without compromising taste, aligning with the post-war emphasis on efficiency by offering families familiar comfort foods with minimal effort. And when you bite into them, they feel so uh, 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 crispy, crispy and, crunchy. and crunchy. And the inside is so nice. And Cheese Whiz, developed by Kraft in the mid-1950s, mirrored the era's fascination with processed cheese. Costing only 57 cents and packaged conveniently in a jar, Cheese Whiz offered a smooth, spreadable cheese alternative, becoming a staple for snacks, dips, and sandwich fillings. Its convenience, long shelf life, and versatility made it a hit in households across America. The 1950s in the United States saw economic prosperity and a growing middle class, leading to increased consumer spending. Ending. This, coupled with the rise of suburban living, drove the demand for convenient and time-saving food options. Processed foods like those from Dunkin' Donuts, Aura Ida, and Cheese Whiz perfectly met these cultural shifts, offering accessible indulgence and catering to the evolving tastes of a nation on the move. Today, the impact of these 1950s innovations is still felt in American cuisine. Dunkin' Donuts has become a global coffee and donut empire. Aura Ida products remain a frozen food staple, and Cheese Whiz continues to be a beloved part of snack culture. So we're saying goodbye to the bold 1950s, but can you guess what mouthwatering snacks stole the show in the 1960s? The 1960s marked a transformative period in American history, and the realm of snacks reflected the changing tastes and lifestyle of the era. Goldfish, Pop-Tarts, and the debut of Doritos in 1966 became emblematic of the evolving culinary landscape. Ai Chihuahua. Doritos 3D Snacks. These cheesy, grinning, fish-shaped wonders weren't just snacks. They were a party in your mouth, capturing the carefree vibe of the swinging 60s. And at just 29 cents, kids and adults alike couldn't get enough of these crispy delights, perfectly baked and packaged for snacking nirvana. Lunchboxes and hangouts just got a whole lot more interesting. Then, in 64, Kellogg's dropped the breakfast bomb with Pop-Tarts. Selling for about 23 cents for a package of two, these toaster-friendly pastries filled with fruity goodness were a game changer for the hustle and bustle lifestyle of the 60s. Picture this, you're on the go, pop one of these bad boys in the toaster, and voila, a warm, delicious treat in no time. The catchy jingle and the convenience factor turned Pop-Tarts into a household legend. But wait, there's more. In 66, Frito-Lay unleashed Doritos, flipping the snack world on its head. Selling for 29 cents for two Oz bags, these tortilla chips weren't just seasoned. They were partying with a flavor combo that screamed adventure. Bold and zesty, Doritos were the go-to snack for a generation hungry for something new and exciting. Now, why were these snacks such big shots in the 60s? Well, the 60s weren't just about tie-dye and peace signs. They were a cultural revolution. With the counterculture movement and the Vietnam War shaking things up, people needed snacks that matched the era's dynamism. Goldfish, Pop-Tarts, and Doritos weren't just munchies. They were symbols of a changing American lifestyle. Fast forward to today, and these snacks are still rocking it. Goldfish and Pop-Tarts have kept things fresh with a rainbow of flavors to suit every palate. And Doritos, well, they've become a global snack sensation with a flavor lineup that's as diverse as your playlist. So, next time you're reaching for those cheesy fish, fruity pastries, or zesty tortilla chips, remember, you're biting into a piece of the 60s, a taste of innovation and excitement that has stood the test of time. The 1970s served up a delectable blend of sophistication and family-friendly dining. Picture the bubbling pots of communal goodness and a game-changer in the fast-food world that would leave a lasting imprint. First up, fondue. This Swiss sensation made waves in the 70s, featuring melted cheese in a pot designed for sharing. It wasn't just about the cheese, it was a full-blown social event. Fondue became the go-to for everything, from casual hangs with friends to fancy dinner parties. But it didn't stop 
a cheese. Chocolate fondue joined the party, becoming the sweet star of dessert tables. The 70s fondue craze wasn't just about indulging in deliciousness, it was about creating shared moments, fostering togetherness, and soaking in the convivial vibes. Now shift gears to the Golden Arches, McDonald's. In 1979, they dropped a culinary bombshell, the Happy Meal. Packaged in a vibrant box adorned with everyone's favorite characters and paired with a mini toy, the Happy Meal was a game changer for family dining. This wasn't just about a quick bite. It was a joyous, entertaining experience for the little ones. Those toys? Well, they weren't just throwaways. They became collectibles, adding a whole new layer to the meal's popularity. <laughs> Yummy! And one for you! Thanks, Ronald! Ronald was back and the 70s weren't just about bell-bottoms and disco. There were cultural shifts, too. People were craving more than just a meal. They wanted experiences. Fondue, with its Swiss roots, tapped into the hunger for unique communal dining adventures. Meanwhile, the Happy Meal from McDonald's perfectly aligned with the rising trend of family-centric dining, offering not just food, but a whole entertainment package for the kiddos. Now, let's step into the flavor-packed time machine and groove back to the rad 1980s when American food culture was experiencing a turbocharged transformation. The 1980s was a decade of diverse tastes and snacks that made life a little more convenient and a whole lot more delicious. First up, the international superstar Pesto. This Italian sensation, costing 2 to $4 per jar, was crafted from fresh basil, garlic, pine nuts, parmesan cheese, and olive oil. It danced its way into American kitchens, symbolizing a newfound fascination with global flavors. Pesto wasn't just a sauce, it was a trendsetter, infusing Mediterranean magic into everything from pasta to sandwiches and salads. The 80s were all about expanding palates, and Pesto became the culinary compass, guiding folks into uncharted and delicious territories. But hold on to your neon leg warmers, there's more. Enter Pizza Rolls, the snack that became an 80s icon for convenience. Courtesy of Totino's, these bite-sized pizza pockets cost around $2 per package and were the answer to the fast-paced lifestyle of the era. Big pizza taste in a bite-sized roll. Kids can't resist their delicious pizza flavor. Totino's Pizza Rolls. Quick, easy, and bursting with pizza goodness, pizza rolls weren't just a snack. They were a lifestyle. A taste so big, it makes cheese puffs seem sort of flat. Totino's Pizza Rolls, the pizza way to snack. Whether you were diving into them after school or sharing them at social shindigs, these little pockets of joy encapsulated the essence of 80s, snacking fun, convenient, and undeniably delicious. Totino's Crispy! New bacon. The 80s weren't just about neon lights and big hair. They were a melting pot of global influences in the culinary world. Pesto, with its Italian roots and pizza rolls representing the epitome of convenience, mirrored the changing attitudes towards food in this dynamic decade. Fast forward to today, and these 80s darlings are still rocking our taste buds. Pesto has transcended its trendy status and found a permanent spot in supermarkets and restaurants, continuing to add freshness and vibrancy to dishes. Meanwhile, pizza rolls have evolved offering new flavors and varieties, but still providing that quick and satisfying taste of nostalgia for those who remember the rad-snacking vibes of the 1980s. So whether you're craving a taste of the Mediterranean or a bite-sized blast from the past, the 80s got you covered. The rolls they crave now come in sandwich and Mexican favorites. Totino's Rolls, it's how kids help themselves. The 1990s marked a period of innovation and experimentation in the American food industry, introducing a range of novel products that would leave a lasting impact on culinary trends. First up, the translucent sensation Crystal Pepsi. Imagine a clear cola disrupting the norm of brown sodas, introduced by PepsiCo in 1992. Marketed as a refreshing and futuristic drink, Crystal Pepsi cost around $1.50 and dared consumers to embrace the unconventional. Despite facing challenges and eventually disappearing from the shelves, Crystal Pepsi became a symbol of the 90s adventurous spirit and product innovation, capturing a consumer culture hungry for the unexpected. Then, making packed lunches cooler than ever, enter Lunchables. Kraft unleashed these pre-packaged marvels in 1988, but the 90s saw them skyrocketing in popularity. These convenient combos of crackers, meats, cheeses, and sometimes even dessert redefined lunchtime for kids and provided a hassle-free solution for busy parents. 
Costing just around $1 per box, it was more than just a meal. Lunchables tapped into the rise of individualism, offering a customizable and fun experience that resonated with the evolving food choices of the era. Now for a sweet indulgence, the molten chocolate cake. This decadent dessert, featuring a gooey, chocolatey center wrapped in a warm, slightly crisp exterior, became the darling of dessert enthusiasts in the 1990s. Served in upscale restaurants and costing around $5 to $10 depending on the restaurant, it embodied the era's emphasis on luxury and decadence, turning every bite into a rich and indulgent experience. The 90s were a playground for culinary experimentation, and Crystal Pepsi, Lunchables, and the Molten Chocolate Cake were its daring players. While Crystal Pepsi might have fizzled out, Lunchables has adapted to the changing tides of preference, and variations of the Molten Chocolate Cake still grace dessert menus today.